Hi, this is Father Jeremiah of Grace Anglican Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina, and today we're going to be going over the collect for the fourth Sunday in Advent. It's a wonderful collect, and every time I read it, it just stirs me with anticipation for the Lord's coming and the work that He is doing in me and in His church. Before we get into that, I ask you to do those three things that I always ask you to do. Please hit that like button. Liking this video lets it show up in more and more homepages for people on whatever video network you're using. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. And also hit that share button. Sharing helps our channel to grow, helps people to discover us, helps us to reach more and more people through you. So if you do those three things, it will help us to grow and help us to continue striving to be a blessing to those that come across our videos. And so we think about the collect for the fourth Sunday in Advent. Like I said, a beautiful collect, one that is very important, I think, and it's one of those collects that stirs me up because the first thing that we say is, stir up your power, O Lord. And so let's consider this collect and read it together. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And as we are sorely hindered by our sins from running the race that is set before us, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Isn't that wonderful just to hear what this collect is asking God to do? The first thing that comes out of our lips to the Lord is stir up your power, O Lord. Stir up your strength, stir up your might, stir up your ability to save and redeem and fix the problems in this world. Stir up your full power. You are the Almighty God. And so we cry out, stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might, come among us. Come among us with all of your power, with all of who you are. Why is it that we can ask that? Isn't that something that should be scary to us? As believers, it's not, because we have been redeemed by Jesus. As believers, we have been baptized, and we have come to faith through the Word, and have been made children of God. And thus, we can ask God to come among us with great might because we know that He is working to fulfill His promises in us. And that's what Advent is all about. It's about reflecting on the promises of God that He has given to us throughout the Old Testament, throughout all of Scripture. We look back at God promising to come among His people, at God promising to redeem His people, to bring them out of the exile of sin, to bring them out of the exile that they have caused themselves to go into, and to redeem us, to renew us, to make us into new people. That is what we're asking God to do when we say, stir up your power and with great might come among us. We are his people and we want him to be with us. We want him to be in our midst. It shouldn't be a fearful thing to ask God to act among us. And in light of that coming in his great might to be amongst us, we confess. And as we are sorely hindered by our sins from running the race that is set before us, let your bountiful grace and mercy, mercy speedily help and deliver us. You see, we're still sinners, even with the redemption that God has placed upon us and in us and the renewal that he has created, we are still sinners in this world. We still have a sin nature that's bound up to us. Even though we have received a new nature from God by the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, a new heart that can love God, that can respond, that can act, we're still sorely hindered by our sins from running the race that is set before us. The Christian faith, the Christian walk, the Christian life is one that is compared to a race in scripture that we are running in order that we might not lose. We are running in order to reach the goal, the finish line, that renewal, that resurrection from the dead. And so we run in faith. We run with trust. We run in a desire to be fully changed at the end. But our sin hinders us. Our sin trips us up. Our sin causes us to slow down and to get distracted and to get winded, to get worn out, to not know how to keep going, to feel like we can't keep going. And so we're sorely hindered by that sin, by all the sins we commit from pursuing that life that God has called us to. And so we ask for his bountiful grace and his mercy to come to us. We want his favor to be renewed upon us. We want his favor to come among us. We want his mercy to be poured upon us as well. That bountiful grace, that bountiful favor, that bountiful kindness and compassion and steadfast love, that mercy we need to speedily come, to come and help us, but not only to help us, but to completely and totally deliver us from who we are in and of ourselves. That's what we need is grace and mercy to deliver us from the sin that is in us, from the sin that is around us, from the sin that consumes us and is leading slowly to our very physical deaths. That sin itself, the sin nature, is leading to our deaths. And we want his mercy and grace to deliver us from that sin. And that's part of the good news is that even if we do die physically, we are ultimately delivered 
from the grave. We are ultimately delivered from permanent death for there is a resurrection from the dead. There is a time when those who have died in the faith will be raised back up in their bodies. That though between when their bodies died and their souls entering to heaven and that time of the complete resurrection from the dead, for that time, yes, our soul and our bodies are separated. They are ripped apart, but that's not what is intended to be. It is intended to be together, body and soul, bound up with one another in perfection, in renewal, in the grace and the mercies of God. We look forward to that. We want to be delivered, and in a way, entering into physical death is a deliverance from the sin nature. For then we are purified, and we await the resurrection of the dead, when we will be completely purified in our physical bodies as well. That we will have new lives, we will live in a glorified state, in a new creation, in a new heavens, and a new earth, where there is no sun or moon, because the Father and the Son are the sun and moon for us to live by, and to see, and to walk by. And so we cry out, even in this life where we are sorely hindered by our sins, for grace to help us, for grace and mercy to deliver us. And it is all, of course, through Jesus Christ the Son, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And all the honor and the glory is for this Son and this Father and this Holy Spirit, who is the God of creation, who is the God of redemption, the one God that is yet revealed to us in the three persons. That is three distinct persons for us, working for us, working to us, working to make us new. And so we ask the Lord to stir up his power, to come among us. We ask him to overlook our hindrance by sins, to overlook our sins and to forgive them and to give grace and mercy to help us in fighting off those sins, to help us in having the strength that we need, but also for the grace and mercy to deliver us ultimately from those sins through the resurrection of the dead, through the life to come, through the eternal life he has given to us. And so for this fourth Sunday of Advent, what a beautiful and amazing prayer to be praying as we are on the cusp of celebrating the birth of Christ, of celebrating the redemption from God coming and being born into this world. We are ready for it. And here we are confessing that we are ready to be delivered as we look for that first birth, that first coming of the Lord, and ever look forward to that second coming where we will ultimately and completely and truly be delivered. And so may you be encouraged in these coming days as we are making our final preparations for Christmas. May you be encouraged to continue seeking the Lord, to continue running this race, to not let your sins continually drag you down, but to confess them and to have faith and trust that God will fulfill his promises of forgiving you and redeeming you and delivering you and helping you in the midst of those very sins. So may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.